Hi, I'm Mark Clegg, and welcome to the Photographer Academy. And today uh, we get going with our Photoshop school. Let me just um, exit out of PowerPoint, which I have now done, and shut that down. There we go. And uh, on screen, uh, we're going to be uh, looking at the fundamental session of workflow today. And each session that we do, we're going to be looking at a workflow of an image. And even though there are several ways to be doing the kind of the same thing, uh, I'm just going to be showing you a different technique. So along the Photoshop school kind of route, you should be learning different techniques and so on. Uh, initially, we're going to be looking at a selection process, and then we're going to be looking at uh, how that image is finished uh, within a certain period of time to a level. So we're going to look at a commercial level and then basically as a consumer level as well with it. So um, the first thing, if you're unfamiliar with this working environment, we're in technically the slideshow mode of Bridge. Uh, Bridge, remember, is a free part of Photoshop. Uh, we've got loads of training for you on the Academy to actually see how it kind of uh, involves. If you uh, use a Lightroom, then basically everything that I'm doing here in Bridge, you can do very, very similar in Lightroom. I just prefer Bridge because it's quicker. So um, on my left hand side, I've got all my, fav my favorite uh, kind of folders here, which I can literally just drag in um, from one place to another to actually put into here. And I can look at things in different ways, um, but we're not here to talk about that kind of just full on workflow today. Uh, we're here to actually talk about workflow of images and things. So once we start to um, want to make a selection of an image, we're going to have to go through a process of either elimination or a positive selection. In this case, we're looking at a kind of a commercial selection. So we're going to be ignoring anything that we basically don't want. Um, because we're going to be deleting those off the system. We don't need those at all. Uh, and basically, in a commercial way for selection of images, we're only really looking for the best, and then the best of the best, and then the best of the best of the best, as it were. So um, when we kind of select onto an image, uh, we want to go into the full screen vo uh, view if we want to actually work in the way that I'm working with. Um, however, um, if we look along the top here of uh, Bridge, we've got different kind of modes that we can kind of quickly select on and basically work in our own way. So uh, again, it's basically just down to how you prefer to work. I'm working in essential view for our session today. On the right hand side, in a sense, essential is basically um, the preview of an image will, will be shown. If you select multiple images, they will be shown. I can make this window bigger by dragging it to the right hand side, um, or I can actually be dragging it to the right hand side to make the window smaller. If I wish to actually lose all the panels left and right, hitting the tab key um, most of the time will basically allow you to hide all of the actual kind of um, side panels. Um, so basically set up things how you want to work. Don't worry if you're changing your workflow uh, over the course of weeks or months or years, because obviously it's all about maturing. Once we get into the window of images, now these um, images are just the raw file. However, um, if we were looking at the um, workflow of a specific shoot, in within these images, we'd also be seeing the JPEG files as well. I've already separated those off. And in fact, they've already been taken off site. So if I go into my um, website, if I go into or organize, and I go into my JPEG vault, which is just a folder I created in portraiture in JPEG vault in the year 2000, and then basically into the client themselves, and then basically these are all the JPEGs from that shoot um, day where we're shooting for Academy and so on with it. Okay, so if we scroll through all of these images, eventually we will come to the pink sheet shoot here, which is showing all the actual J, uh, JPEG files. So I'm separating these off to put them um, safe elsewhere, but basically we're not looking to actually use these. They are just a pure backup. Okie doke. So let's uh, look at how we go into the uh, the view mode. Um, hitting the space bar goes straight into the full screen. 
Um, in case you forget, common sense, go up to view, and as you can see here, full screen preview is basically going into a uh, spacebar, or the same thing will actually go into slide uh, the slideshow, which is basically going through control L, and that will obviously kind of transition the images if what you've got set up. So just from the space bar as such, um, we go into the first image. If we want to actually zoom in and out of an image, um, you can do the same thing as you would in Photoshop. If you've got a scroll wheel, you can basically scroll in and in and in. Um, obviously, we're just looking at the graphic file and things ready, or using the scroll wheel in a backwards momentum, basically will actually zoom out. So when we start to actually look at an image, and we want to see it in 100%, basically we can either click on it once and that will now be at 100%. If we want to scroll in closer and closer and closer and closer, obviously you've got that choice. If you click into the image, it goes back to full screen mode. Okay, so um, we're talking about um, selection of an image. So we're basically using the right arrow to basically make the selection. Now you are seeing a few of the getting ready shots in one of the training films. So we're showing here how the model actually has, has pants on, but when we've, uh, and this is now visible because we're showing with a reflector on the left-hand side, whereas obviously if the reflector is removed, basically you can see that there's pretty much no pants visible unless we go in very, very close. So anyway, when we start to work through the Im images, in a positive, we're looking to add a rating onto the photograph that says, hey, I really like this image and I think it's really good. So um, with the kind of photograph we're doing, we just want to hit a star rating of some kind. And in this case, uh, numeric one, two, three, four, five will add stars one, two, three, four, five to the image. So one, two, three, or five, pressing the zero will get rid of uh, those stars as well. If I want to add a color tab to the image, uh, numeric six is red, numeric seven is yellow, numeric eight is green, and numeric nine is blue. The benefit of using uh, colored tabs is that you don't technically have to move your finger off the keyboard to take the tab color back off. You just press the same numeric again, and basically it will remove the actual um, uh, color itself and things really. So uh, as far as the, uh, the basics of concern of moving through the image, now we just need to actually, as I said, start to work through and add a star rating to images that we feel are good and don't don't be afraid if um, you're only selecting you know five or six really nice images uh, the whole point of selection is that we are there to actually kind of find the best of the best so uh, again looking at things like the pants is visible here and i don't want to do the retouching work to it we are doing some retouching today in fact but we're not going to do that um, so just actually making sure she's hiding it uh, to just go through. There's sometimes I'm shooting too fast and basically the hair light do doesn't fire. I'm aware of that as well. And I I'm also aware of the kind of the hand positions, expression, what everything is kind of going on. So as far as the selection is concerned, um, going through to find the best, I would expect for a commercial shoot, to go through a selection at least two, if not three times, but getting rid of the trash to begin with uh, is really the first job of selection. Now, when you're just getting going in the likes of um, Photoshop, um, Bridge and Camera Raw and so on, you're obviously going to be worried as far as your um, file store uh, storage is concerned sorry this is showing where the different lights and what the different lights are doing and things really um, so basically we're into the selection kind of, of images now this is ready for pink i uh, think pink month in, in fact so just kind of going through the images images to select or not but um what we're really trying to do in the uh, selection is as i said choose images that are going to be without doubt very sellable um, either as a commercial client or to a, por a portrait client. If they're a commercial client, are they meeting the brief? 
if they're for a, por a portrait client, are we making the client more sellable, more beautiful, more elegant, more classy, more sensual than basically they are in kind of real life and things really. So as far as the, um, the, the look and the feel to the images, as far as selection is concerned, that's something that I cannot really teach you, except what I will recommend to you is avoid procrastination. So in other words, make a decision on the photograph, live with your decision, but what we're really looking to do is manage files. So as I began to say, when we're getting going in Photoshop, management of your data or your file is going to be something that you're worried about, and probably you're going to hang on to more images than you actually need. Now, remember that if this is a raw file, which it is, it's a very, very large file. And the more we keep, obviously, the more it's going to actually take up hard drives and so on and so on with it and things really. So um, this shoot act actually continues on with the kind of the other pink uh, netting and so on with it, just kind of getting ready here. Uh, lost the bra strap now, so we're ready to actually go through it. Um, but again, as far as the uh, sensual element and things really, the classy element, whether you need expression or not, that is really down to you and the brief, as it were, if it's a stylization that you're doing with each of your images. But all I'm doing is making a selection of photographs, okay? So by doing that, I can basically work my way through um, lots and lots of, in fact, we're not far, far away from the finish, so we may as well actually just finish doing them all in a minute. Uh, just stepping backwards to press zero, uh, zero. So if you're just joining us now, we're going through the workflow of an image on each of our Photoshop sessions. And in this case, we're cho choosing our best images in the first run. There we go. So um, with now 161 images, as we can see over on the left-hand side here in the ratings bar, unlabeled and 57 images labeled with a three star, at this stage, I can click on no rating and then click onto one image, then control A to select all of those images, and then I will be deleting the file. Now, remember, as I've shown you already, a JPEG of every one of these images that I shot at that stage, which has correct exposure and so on, have already been uploaded off site, so they're technically all safe. In other words, I've got a backup, but I haven't got a backup of the raw at this point. They would probably still exist on a card because I try and edit on the actual day of the actual shoot itself. Okay, so even though I've given it a three star rating at this point, I wanna reduce their star rating down at this point. I'm gonna reduce this down to a one star. So I've just controlled A to select all those images. I now press the one star and I downgrade them all to the one star. So knowing now that these are images that I really like, if I was going to hang on to images, then this is basically probably the first stage of I would be uh, keeping these and they're gonna be backed up onto another drive and so on. However, I would probably go one deeper than this so to actually get to the next stage of selection because probably you know there's going to be 20 or so really great images and not 56 of them like we're seeing on screen. So in this stage, remember, we just press the space bar. We enter straight into full screen. We go back into now a selection of the images that we feel are basically now better than before. So if I change my mind, I can go backwards and basically then take the star rating off, continue through. Remember at this stage, we're adding a three star to anything I wanna keep. So if I'm in doubt, keep it. I like the one with the double bust. I like the one with both busts and visible. So I'm gonna hang on to those, but I prefer this one of her face to off to the side. So I go backwards and I basically delete the three stars, go back, add the, uh, the, uh, the three star to this image and move on to the next photograph. I like it with the one bust here as well. I like this image here. And so we're basically making, as I said, our way through the best of the best to really get 
what we're aiming towards uh, in a commercial way is images that we feel that are sellable. And if they're sellable, they're worth kind of adding that final finish to. Just from here. Okay, so let's just stop with the pink sheet because that's what we're working on today. But you can see already out of 21 images, we've, uh, sorry, out of those uh, images, we've selected 21 um, of those um, uh, pink sheets alone are our, basically our best of our best of our best and things really. If these were just the images that we were going to keep and present to the client at this stage, we would go to control A to select all of these images. And now we're going to enter in the renumbering, renaming, and basically adding copyright information to the image before we then process it. So in this stage, we're going into uh, tools and we're going to replace, uh, sorry, batch rename. We're going to add a zero one and we are going to have three digits, even though we're down into two digits here. Overall, with this goal, it could be a three digit shoot. So just clicking onto it and I go three digits. So this will go 0010002. If I wanted to start on 25, you just enter 25 in and Photoshop is intelligent enough to actually add zero in the front to make it a three digit. I'm going to go one and then basically in the text, if that didn't exist, I just click on the pl little plus here. And the, the text, what I want to do is an underscore. And in this case, it's going to be pink sheet. And then an underscore. And at this stage, I'm going to add a date. I can, if I want to, add in a date from here, date and time. Okay. And basically, it'll kind of put it in if I want, if I want it to. And you can change the date and the time to the basics, whatever, whatever you want on here. So when I press rename, now we've got the full kind of file name, everything's running through. Um, the next stage then is for us to add our copyright information to the image. So at this stage, we want to go to tools, replace metadata. And at this point, I just need to go into Mark Cleghorn 2020 in this in, in instance, but it could be 2021. And then this is uh, giving me all my file properties and Im information running down the right hand side here. So the metadata within the image as such. And then as far as the head, uh, the headline is concerned, I can add this in now. So this is pink sheet, Molly. And then the description is uh, breast cancer awareness 2021. Pink sheet. Okay, so from here, they're all basically done. They'll replace all the metadata within it. If you need to add in more kind of keywords and so on, which we do, remember to select all the images if that's what you want, if they're all the same, and then basically adding in the likes of pink sheet, boudoir, breast. Uh, October. Okay, and then basically that's just add, add, added in the keywords to each one of these images once they've updated themselves. And that point, the, we're going to go through the uh, processing of all of these files to ensure that they are, they're going to be turned into a, a, J, a JPEG if it's a consumer client, possibly a TIFF file if it's a commercial client. So within here, we would then select all our images, control A, and we'll enter into the camera raw processor. So we're going to go to open and we're going to go in camera raw. So um, it's basically bridge is a kind of communication between all the Adobe Pro uh, programs. And this allows us to kind of work fast and wise. So we're not working on just one image, we can if we want to, we're not getting distracted by tweaking images one at a time whilst we're in the editing pro process. So at this stage, we are now at a finishing level. At this stage, um, if you have a certain photographic look, and we'll show you how to make presets in a, a future event, but if you go into your presets 
and you have a studio look that is what you do all the time, then we can apply it across all of those images. We can then actually go back to the image itself and actually then make any slight corrections that we might need to on the uh, photograph itself and things really. So brightening or lightening and so on with it. So again, what we're doing is taking an image and we're making a decision of what things are going to go on. So we would um, select a color. So as far as the white balance, uh, whether it's flash, flash balance like I shoot on all the time, I should say. Then you might look at this image and go, well, it's too dark, in fact, so I need to brighten the, uh, the image. I need uh, some sharp, sharpening in a contrast, so I'm going to use the contrast slide, slider in that way. Usually when we add contrast into an image here, we're also going to um, take a black into a minus, and that basically adds a kind of a, a, a double contrast. So it's better to actually work in a small way with one and a small way with another to kind of bring it back into more of a photorealism like we used to with film and so on. If we want to dull or advance highlights more, we can either brighten the highlights or dull them by using the sliders left to dull, right to actually increase. Shadows, the same thing, open them up or close them down. As a rule, if you're opening up the shadow all the time, you probably need to think about what you're doing with your day-to-day -day photography and using either a fill light or reflectors or whatever you would do and so on with it. Um, then as far as the uh, whites is concerned, very, very similar to the, high, uh, the highlights, of course, but just a little bit more of a, dr a dramatic way and an overall tonality. Texture and clarity. If you are a boudoir photographer and you need to do like an instant view, then things like a texture going to a left will basically skin soften here. If you watch, if I just basically put it back again, and if I now look at the, tech, at the texture as I push it to the right, it softens. So if you're going to do an instant view, I would definitely recommend the likes of um, the texture um, use here and things really. Clarity is the old school. So this um, is a much harsher effect, looks more milky and everything else because it's looking at the mid-tone sharpness, um, how it kind of adjusts itself. Remember, you can go and watch on the Academy, lots more kind of training to do with these sliders specifically and things really. So um, really what we want to do though today is kind of choose an image and we want to kind of go ahead and actually create and finish this photograph. So the first thing will be, um, I'm going to just increase the exposure just a little bit. I'm going to increase my contrast to a plus eight, and I'm going to do a minus eight on the black. As far as the, high, the highlights are concerned, I don't want to brighten those because I want to blow anything out. As far as the texture is concerned, I can reduce it down a little bit if that's what I want, but not in this occasion, because I want to show you it in the likes of um, uh, Photoshop of actually what we're going to do. So remember these images now, we would basically be saving and turning them into a JPEG or a TIFF or whatever it be. We'll cover that in the next session as far as the, the, wor the workflow. But today I want to just go into this image and finish it quickly for you to see it. So I'm just going to open it up in Photoshop. Looking for Photoshop to open up a minute. There we go. And by opening it directly in Photoshop, it's made the adjustments to the files we just adjusted. And basically, as you saw, um, because I didn't have Photoshop open, it basically um, uh, opened Photoshop for me because I said open. And basically, in the background, it shut down <clears throat> viewing window, the ACR window within the likes of Photoshop. Okay, so let's look at some quick fixes today for you in Photoshop School. The first thing will be is probably cropping. As a rule, cropping is the very last thing that we do to an image. Um, in case we need to add it in. But as it is, this is designed to be a square image, so I can hit the crop. I can basically go up into the top here and click on one-to-one -one square. I can then actually drag across the image 
to give me the um, uh, square crop that I need. And that basically hasn't cropped a pixel size. It's just cropped a, um, a, a cropping. So it's just lost the left and the right, whatever I lost and things really. If um, I did control Z on that for a minute, and if I hit the crop tool again, you can see up at the top here, there's an extra little box that says delete crop pixels. If you uncheck that, okay, it'll remain. So if I uncheck that now and I hit the crop button again and I move and I double click, if I hit the crop button again, you can see that the pixels on the side remain. So uh, it's technically an uncrop of that image and things. So if you're in any doubt and you get into the habit of cropping things before you do anything else, then probably uncheck that delete crops or, uh, cropped pixels box to actually leave it there for now. But e even that is a bad habit because it's basically going to just keep a very big file size there. OK, so um, let's say we've only shot a JPEG file and um, at this stage, remember, you can actually work through filter and go into Camera Raw uh, by itself. Camera Raw is technically in Photoshop a filter um, and it will allow you to do some things. It's not like working on the raw file in ACR and Bridge and Lightroom. This is working on it in the likes of Photoshop. Okay. So, um, here though let's look at how we would lighten the image a little bit to begin uh, begin with so a quick trick to lighten an image if all you ever shot is a jpeg is to duplicate the file so in other words we click on layers and then we drag the layer down to the uh, plus and that will actually duplicate the layers we just saw if i just go and drag something below there we go we can see this a little bit easier so, so if i just delete that one there and i do the same thing so grabbing this image dragging it down to the plus will now basically duplicate that layer if i want to lighten it this is where we're going to use the blend modes and blend modes can be quite confusing so in the first sessions that we're going to be working with with photoshop school we're only going to be talking about screen or lighten or multiply and darken those are the ones that we're going to use so in screen this will give us an overall light just really looks at the high the highlight element in this case i'm going to use the screen and because this is uh, a development we don't have to have the whole effect so in layers even though i've set the blend layer i can also change the amount of that it's affecting the overall as such really so just by dragging that down using the scrubby which is a little finger and hand when you hover uh, above many of the opacity changes it'll actually turn from an arrow to a, a little hand if you go left it darkens right it lightens you're already used to that in the likes of acr now exactly the same with bridge Okie doke. Now, in the same way, perhaps we don't want all of this effect to be happening. So we want to use the likes of a mask. So on the layers palette, if we click on this little almost black, uh, white aperture with a black hole in the middle, that will add a mask to the right hand side of the image. And at this stage, it's waiting for us to do. Now, basically, there's going to be a white or a black white reveals black hides so any of the effects uh is 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 basically um uh, all going to be shown here because it's white so it's showing everything we'll talk about uh, um the different kind of um mask options how to use them on the next session that we're doing so in this case i want to actually uh, almost kind of erase some of the effect and things really so i'm going to paint onto this mask so i'm just going to come across to here and I'm going to select the brush tool. Uh, but this is probably one of the most common things uh, we're going to use. So the shortcut is B. If you hold down and hover, um, basically you can see that Photoshop is giving you some advice. You can learn how to use it as well as obviously you can see the shortcut as well. Right. Right bracket makes bigger, left bracket makes smaller. Okie doke. We're also another thing we've got to look at is the opacity amount. So how much 
how much do we want the actual um, uh, paint paintbrush to work? If it's 100%, it's 100%. If it's less, you just drag it to the side or you type in there. <coughs> because we've got white paint on top here, if I paint onto the image, nothing's going to happen. If I just press X, which is a flip between the foreground and black background um, colors, so X, you can see on the bottom left now, um, black has been put on top. And now if I do it, you can start to see how it makes that effect, okay? If we make a mistake, just press X again, put white on top, and paint it out again with it and things ready. So this is no different like we used to do in the dark room, except we can redo things. So lightning and darkening in the likes of using your hand or whatever you're doing. So uh, dodging and burning as it were then. So for here though, uh, let's put X and we'll kind of just darken the pink silk just a little bit, darken down the bottom cor uh, the corners, the top corner a touch. Let's go down to a 50%. So if I press five on the key of uh, the keyboard, it reduces it down to a 50% now. And then pretty much we can see what we've done with the image of how much we've lightened that up. Okay, so let's now look at uh, removing the tattoos and then we'll actually soften the skin in a, a very strong way. So again, for the likes of a consumer boudoir photographer, who needs to do an instant view and, and basically wants to actually give a, a strong effect or they want their assistant to get them to at least a basic viewing level uh, and they're going to go back and finish all the images one, uh, again. Now, um, we don't have to flatten this image. I'm going to um, just to uh, work in the technique we're going to be showing you. But remember, in layers in Photoshop School, uh, layers are the most powerful thing I think that Photoshop exists as. So being able to work on different layers and have different effects going on is really what makes it very, very strong. Okay, we've got about six minutes left. So I wanna, I'm gonna flatten these for now, but that is a destructive adjustment to an image. And we're gonna talk about destructive adjustments um, at some stage where obviously we basically, we can't go backwards. The great thing about a raw file is that it's fully adjustable at any stage. When we go to save an image, if it's a PSD, there are certain elements in that PSD document that will basically allow us to kind of change and so on. But a raw is our best friend most of the time, as well as things like smart, ob smart objects, which we'll cover again. Okay, so let's look quickly then to finish this off. So we're just going to go into getting rid of the tattoo. The first thing I would say is for the likes of that is to just go and pick up the patch tool. That's kind of a little square with little kind of um, lines coming off it. And all we're going to do is now click and drag around the area that we want to uh, adjust. This could be bags underneath the eyes. It could be any way you want. At this stage, we're just going to drag it across. And that is going to be intelligent as far as the fixing of that image is concerned. If you find that uh, you've got some little bright areas or whatever it is, go and kind of take small sections of that image and just clone them close to it and things really. So uh, again, the patch tool, a little bit of practice, but once you go in, pretty much great with it, things really. So in the same way here, if we kind of just select, or if we select around this other tattoo, now obviously the client would want this, but a commercial client might not want, so they'll need to do a much higher retouching job than we're doing here today. So we're just click and dragging it away. It grabs whatever's around and basically makes a, an estimated guess around the image. Obviously, if we'd kind of gone towards a darker environment, it would have helped it. But we can work towards there. In the same way, we can actually just select around an image and hit a backspace and that will actually bring up, so the backspace on the keyboard will bring up the content aware fill or the fill dialog box, I should say it brings up. And we've got a choice here whether we're going to fill it with the foreground color, the background color, a color, or in this case, I want it to be the content aware. So just pressing OK, and then I just do it, and then it makes the guess. So if we just step backwards in the layers palette next to here, I've got the history palette. 
and you can see all the adjustments that we've just made with this image, yes? And I can basically step backwards at any stage to get us back to the point where we want to start again. I'm just stepping backwards, as you can see here. Yep. So we've made the selection around the image. Let's do it again. So let's make the selection around it. And now we're going to hit the backspace. It brings up the fill dialog box. We press OK. And then Photoshop tries to actually do a good job. Now, there's finer tuned controls of this as well. But for now, let's just let it do that job. And then we'll drag out the patch to actually allow it to start to fill in here. So you can see there's some very big highlights. So let's step backwards to where it was. And let's just do this a little bit at a time instead of one big amount at a time, the whole thing, in other words. So remember, this is good for bags under the eyes, stray hairs, lots of things. Now, the reason I can get away and do it quickly, we're, all, we're almost finished today. Um, uh, the reason that we can do it quickly is that if we want to actually go through a very, very strong skin smoothing, so you can see all the kind of the goosebumps or kind of skin marks or whatever it would be. And how are we going to kind of get rid of these? Well, um, there's going to be a technique that we're going to use over and over again in, in different ways. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is look at this in the basic way and explore it in future episodes. So we're going to go to Control J to duplicate the layer. That is the same as me dragging this layer down to the actual uh, plus, plus icon. So Control J duplicates the layer. Okay. Now we're going to go into Filter. This is where all the effects are. And in this case, I want to do a blur. And I don't want to do a surface blur. I want to actually do a Gaussian blur. And a Gaussian blur can be set at whatever kind of level we want. Now, um, we can either see the preview in the screen here by clicking on it. But what we're really looking to do in this case, if we are looking to have almost like a porcelain skin, and I know some people like it, I'm not a massive fan, but you can go in there and add this huge porcelain skin kind of effect to the image. Now, remember where we were looking at the uh, photograph and we put that mask on because this is obviously too much now, yes? So we can either just click onto the mask and we get the white mask. Or we can click on to the Alt key while we click the mask, and that gives us a black mask. So remember, white reveals, black hides. At this stage, I want to come across towards the uh, um, foreground background color palette and make sure that white is on top. I can either just hit the uh, switch here, so the little arrows, or like I was saying, to use the X, and that will actually swap them. If at any stage your color palettes are, diff are different, so in other words, it's kind of red or whatever it be, we're into the, um, so if I was in here and basically the colors are weird, yes, um, if I click into the um, uh, mask, this basically isn't black and white now. We need to click onto the reset and that's given us here. If we click onto the image, though, it still remembers our color selection that we made. And to make a color selection, it's just wandering over into the uh, image and just clicking onto a, a part of the image that you like. However, we want to work on the mask. And at this stage, we want B for our brush. So we're going to click onto it. At this stage, left bracket to make small, smaller and now we can start to actually paint on the actual effect of the milky skin. In other words, to reveal that kind of Gauss, uh, Gaussian blur that we just did a minute ago. So um, I would say, though, if uh, you're really um, looking to preview to clients very fast and you definitely need this extreme skin soft softening, uh, I would probably play around with the effect in the likes of um, uh, the texture like we showed you in raw first but if we kind of click in here and i just click those off you can see that we've lost the actual kind of texture of the skin 
and at least we've got a, a little bit of an element going through. The difference being as we get close to the edge of the actual uh, arm, it starts to actually kind of create a little bit of a weird effect because remember, this is a blurring that we're actually seeing. So it's blurring all these colors here over towards here. Okay, so stage one of Photoshop School done. We've looked at the quick edit as far as the work, the workflow and the selection, the processing of a file um, and just open it directly within Photoshop. We're then basically um, adding um, some effects to the image. We've looked at lightening it. We've removed the tattoos and we've basically added in a skin softening. We've explored layers. We've touched on masks. So quite a lot for you to do if you're just getting going within Photoshop. Thanks for joining me live. I'll see you on the next one.